Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is a long weekend Friday for us today, so that's pretty exciting. So Melaine from Pico's Kitty Cat Creations, Hi. is she's here and she's uh, giving up her holiday to <laughs> have a chat with us. So because we're chatting with Pico's Kitty Cat Creations, we're having some tea today on our show. So um, I'm a baby. I probably can't even drink this because it's still too hot. I'm the opposite. I need it to burn my throat. Okay. Nope. We're okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it's been sitting for like 20 minutes just, just for me to be able to drink it. So um, for those of you who don't know, Pico's Kitty Cat Creations makes excellent um, things for your fur friends and your fur family. So I guess if you want to tell us a little bit about it. So the main product I'm working on right now with uh, Pico's Kitty Cat Creations is the window seat. So basically it's a window seat for your, your cat to lounge on. It attaches to the window with six suction cups. Um, they're tested for up to 40 pounds. Um, so I originally made one for my cat Pico, which is where the business name came from. He's our namesake. Uh, and it became his favorite spot really quickly. So it kind of grew from that. It was like I was going to make a few for friends, and then their friends seen them, and then it kind of <laughs> just went like crazy. So I was like, there's clearly a need and a want and an interest in this. So How did you come up with the idea? Did you like see it somewhere, or were you just like, my cat loves the window? I, my cat, well, he was a door dasher. So <laughs> he used to try and chase our dog out into the backyard. So I was like, I need to get something that goes on the patio door so he can like watch the dog and not have to like run after him. So I was looking everywhere for a window seat, and most of them either had to like attach to the window sill, like with a bracket, yep. or like they weren't very like attractive. They were made with like PVC piping and like wire, and I was like, eh. So I kind of left it and like let it brew in my mind for a bit. Um, and I was actually making Christmas gifts for someone. <laughs> Uh, I made these serving trays for people, and while trying to paint one one day, my cat Pico decided to curl up into it, and then I was frustrated because he was covered in paint, but I was like, <laughs> wait a second, I was like, this is like the perfect size, and then it kind of went from there on how to make it attached to a window. That's so, so. funny, I never realized that it was uh, originally started as a serving tray. Yeah, I made a bunch for Christmas <laughs> last year, and it kind of started from that, so... So then after you like got started, what was, uh, how did you kind of start really building up momentum and like building, building the business? I actually started as a Facebook group because I thought it was going to be really small, like yep. just like close friends and family and stuff like that. And it quickly grew to like 1,500 members. So I was like, okay, I need to change my, my take <laughs> on this. So um, January 1st was my like fresh start of the year. So I made a new Facebook page. Um, and I promoted in my group that I was having a new page, so that brought over a lot of like uh, previous customers and followers. How did you get the people over? That seems to be a problem for some people who have groups now. Yeah, so um, it was a bit of a challenge. There was a few things I did. Um, I didn't post any new content in the group. Yeah. I would post that there was new content on my page with a link to the page, so if people were interested, they had to go to the page to see it. I also turned off all commenting on posts in the group because, as you, I'm sure you know, in a group, if you comment, it like bo uh, boosts it to the top of the page. Yep. So it, to make sure that the post I wanted to be on top was the one promoting my new Facebook page instead of the group, I turned off all commenting. Um, before doing that, I actually commented with the link to the new page as well and made that like the last comment mm -hmm. on every photo and post and stuff. So I found that really helped. Um, I also promoted that I'd be doing a giveaway on my new page once I got to a thousand likes, so a lot of people were following me and jumping over because of that. Uh, and then to get my page really boosted and really get myself out there, um, my first uh, post in 2018 was about supporting local animal rescues. <laughs> And I asked people, you know, what rescue would you like to see us support? Who do you support? Like for the first four months, what, where would you like to see our donations go? Because we donate uh, a portion of all sales to rescue. Um, and then I tallied up the votes as people commented on the post of um, like which rescues were the yeah. top three. And that's who I've been donating so far to so far this year. And then when they would comment or like on that post, and I would invite them to like the page as well. Yeah. So that really helped. Yeah, you like grew astronomically. I think you're at what 1,200 now or 1,300. Yeah, close to 1,300 <laughs> since January 1st. So pretty yeah. good for anyone who's not uh, in the social media or doesn't have like a a business on Facebook. That's really amazing growth, especially now with all the new algorithm changes. They uh, mm -hmm. don't don't seem to want to share things, but this mm -hmm. uh, seems like it's really going up there. Yeah. I think a lot of it is um, a lot of my content is photos, um, yeah. and not just my own photos of products, and but also sharing the like, customer yeah. photos. So it's a lot less text-based and it's a lot more photo-based. Um, so that seems to get shared more on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And they also have this great little thing now: when you go to post a photo, you can make it a slideshow, which makes it then a video, which gets <laughs> seen even more on Facebook. 
So who doesn't want to watch a slideshow of cute cats? Like really, I always want to watch that <laughs> cute cats. <laughs> so I guess like one of the issues that you've really dealt with this year has been you know people who have saw your idea and saw like how successful it is, and then they've been uh, you know doing the same thing. Yeah. So how have you been dealing with that? Um, I've been dealing with it a few different ways. Depends on the situation and the yeah. kind of like feeling or hostility I guess I get from other people. Um, so first of all, I wanted to make myself legitimate because yeah. I feel like if you're legitimate, people have more like backing in you or like see you as more, I don't know, like professional. Professional, <laughs> yeah. So I registered with CRA. I've contacted the Newfoundland Craft Council. I have a business number. Um, I applied for a copyright on my design, and I got that document all formalized and in place. And um, I took the approach of like if people are copying or people are like you know making the same type of product to be positive in my approach about it um not to you know attack them and say like <laughs> you can't do this or yep. anything like that but just to make them aware of like oh like uh, i really appreciate that you um like our design and you like our product product um if you want to make your own as a diy I really like i promote that all the time that's how i yep. started was a diy i sell the suction cups separately because that's like the security of the bed for anyone who wants yep. to make their own um, and then I always reference like the copyright document and stuff as well and my like uh, my business number and things like that just so people are like oh this is real yeah yeah so besides like having a business number what do you think differentiates you from like the competition I definitely think it's the research of the security and the safety of the product um, I'm not going to sell something yeah. where I, I'm afraid people's cats are going to be injured because I will not sleep <laughs> at night. Yeah. Um, I will have nightmares. So uh, before I was like ready to go, I'll say like live with the product as an actual yeah. business, I put a lot of effort into the weight testing and researching different suction cups and testing them out in different sizes, different companies. Um, brought them to a gym and put them on a mirror because the mirror is glass, so the suction cups adhere properly. And added dumbbells to it until it fell off the off the glass. <laughs> So like that is definitely what sets me apart. So just for a perspective, um, just you know to let the viewers know who are watching, how many dumbbells or how many pounds can uh, okay. the box hold? So it it fell from the window between like 55, 60. So we dialed it back to 40 pounds as like a safety factor. So yeah, we just want to make sure you know if you have two cats that are gonna fight over it or share it or cuddle up on it or yep. whatever, or if your cat's like a really big jumper and he launches himself from a yep. long distance or a, a low height up to the window seat, that it's gonna hold. And we always have two or more in our house as well. Yep. Um, and we test them against really weird things. So yeah, <laughs> like, we're like, oh, there's like ice on the window. We're like put a bed up there and see if it still stays with the temperature change and things like that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, for me, I have like a super, super extra fat cat and I saw it at first and then I saw her weight testing and I was like, oh, okay, well, like if, you know, she can have like 27 bags of flour, I'm pretty sure she can hold boots, <laughs> but he is, uh, he is pretty fat. I feel like people have like an unrealistic weight of how heavy their cats actually I, I are. I weighed my cat one time a couple years ago, just out of curiosity, he's like extra, extra fat. Like he lays down, he has like 17 rolls on his chin. <laughs> so that's just for perspective. All he does is eat, but he's, um... I weighed him, and I think, like, he weighed 20, I want to say 25 or 26 pounds. Yeah. Like, he was, like... That's a big cat. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, like, a he's like an orange, like, tomcat, too. Mm. So, he is, like... He's a bruiser. Chunky? Yeah. yeah, he's a chunky guy. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, most... I would say, like, the average weight for a cat for, would probably be, like, probably, like, 10 to 15 pounds. Yeah. So, that's why, like, with the 40 uh, weight, you can still hold two, like, comfortably. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, that makes sense that you would put all the research in. So, I guess one of the things that a lot of people don't know about you is you are actually uh, an engineer... Engineering technologist. technologist yes. With uh, CBS, is that yes. right? Yes, town CBS. <laughs> so, what's been like uh, running this as a side hustle? Yes. And it's... <laughs> All my extra time, <laughs> all my all my spare time is now not spare time. It is my side gig uh, business time. So um, yeah, working full time and doing this on the side is definitely a huge undertaking, and uh, it gives you a whole new appreciation for anyone else who's doing the same because you realize like how busy their lives must be. Um, one thing that I found really helps is I take like a time during the week when I'm not working and I'll like schedule like all my posts for that week if I can um, just so that way I don't have to think about it when I'm at work and it kind of just generates on its own on Facebook and then I'll check the content and stuff like on lunch break or when I get home and things like that so I find that's been really really helping. So have you been found like the biggest challenge of I guess running this as a side hustle um, as opposed to like a full-time business? 
I feel like giving myself strict hours has been the biggest problem because I feel like every time I get a spare second, I should be working (laughs) instead of actually saying like, oh no, if this was a real, you know, full-time business, I'd work Monday, Friday, eight to four or whatever. So I've been really trying to work on like scheduling. Um, And I keep telling myself I'm going to work Tuesday, (laughs) Thursdays, and Sundays, uh, like Tuesday evening, Thursday evening, Sundays. Uh, that never happens. I work every day. <laughs> so I know. And one of the things that I feel like, too, is, like, a lot of people, um, if you're, like, a side hustler or, like, you're a freelancer, um, a lot of, like, I guess clients just, I guess, wouldn't give you, like, the same, like, I guess, level of respect for your time as they would mm-hmm. if you were, um, like, in, a, like, a regular, like, 8 to 4, yeah. 9 to 5. You get people who are, like, calling at, like, really crazy hours. Yeah. Like, or they think it's almost, like, more... Um, like when you're selling like a product or a, a used item on Facebook, I find like say if you had something up for sale on like a buy and sell group, yeah. and someone would just message you like randomly about the price yeah. or about like info about it, like that's fine. That's kind of mm-hmm. how that's meant to be. But when yeah. it's an actual business, um, yeah, like writing people at like three a.m. and asking for like updates and stuff like that yeah. is can be trying, and also it's trying not to respond. Yeah. Um, to not have that instant reply <laughs> for people because you want yeah. to be like so there for your customers and you want to make sure they're having like a really good experience with you and customer service and stuff so um dialing back and not answering immediately is really hard to do yeah i found that as well like and i know now because like when i first started i was like 24 7 like Mm -hmm. because like i've well i think i talked about this before but i'm reading this book by gary v and i'm trying to read it it's really awful i don't really like it that much actually like i saw a lot of people were like really big fans of it but i was reading it and i was like this is just so unhealthy like he's just like He's like, you have to work like nine to five and then you have to come home and then grind from like six until three and then get up and do it all over again for like seven years and, and then you might make it. Maybe. <laughs> Burn yourself out. You might yeah. survive. And I was like, this is like a really unhealthy perspective to give people. And I, like, that was a perspective that I had going in. Like, if you like watch like the show like Silicon Valley, I don't know if you watch it, but like they're just like Red Bull like in front of their computers <laughs> like all the time. And I'm like, you know, that's like a life that's like glamorized, I feel like. And I feel like now I've like moved away from that so much. I'm like... I'm like, I'll work, like, the morning on this day, and I'll be done at 3, and I'm like, I'm done yeah. at 3. Like, I might respond, like, every now and again, but I'm like... Yeah, if you're, like, not, <laughs> not bored, but if you're having, like, downtime or something, you're like, yeah. oh, I have a message from this client, like, I'll just write them back. Yeah. But you have to be careful, because if you do that too many times, then they get in the habit <laughs> of expecting it. Yeah. Um, another thing I've gotten myself into after starting the business is when I reach out to people, like, if I reach out to yourself, or I reach out yeah. to, like... Um, I go to the gym if I reach out to like the yeah. owner of the gym about a class coming up or anything. Yeah. I'm like always so um, <laughs> like particular to write like you don't have to write me right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you're not, if this isn't your work hours, like don't yeah. respond to me. Like only respond to me when you're like you know in the yeah. zone. Like just like, <laughs> ignore me till then. Yeah. Like, I find like one of the worst things that I do is like. So I'll, like, wake up in the middle of the night and, like, look at my phone. And mm. I'll, I'll read the messages, but I'm, like, I'm obviously not going to respond because it's, like, 3 a.m. Yeah. And then at, like, 2 p.m. the next day, I'll be, like, oh, my God, I read that message. I'm, like, yeah. I read that message. I'm, like, did I respond to that person? Or, like, sometimes I just, like, forget to respond for, like, a couple days. Like, because that's what I do is I just, yeah. like, I read the message with the intent that I'm going to, like, respond mm-hmm. to you later. And then I'm, like, oh, shoot, I just did not respond to you. So. Yeah. I, like, dream about my business, too. <laughs> Like, I'm like, someone asked for, like, a specific, like, type of fabric on a bed, and I literally go to sleep and dream that I found it in a store, and I wake up, and I'm like, where the hell did the fabric go? And it's like, it never happened. I know. It's such a struggle. I, things like that happen to me, too, all the time. I have, like, these weird, like, um, dreams where I just, like, think that they're, like, real life. Like, one time I dreamed it was my birthday, and I was waking up, and it was my birthday, but it, my birthday's in September, and when I woke up, it was, like, April, so... Like, like, it's clearly not. Like, I know, but I woke up, and for, like, that first, like, 30 seconds of my day, I was so excited, but... <laughs> Then I was not excited yeah, Reality hits you. <laughs> or, like, sometimes I'll have dreams that I'm, like, on a beach or, like, somewhere really warm. Mm. I think I, – I, I never know if it's because, like, I'm under blankets and I'm hot. Yeah. So, like, that's why I'm dreaming that I'm somewhere hot. Or yeah. if I'm, like – or if I'm dreaming that I'm somewhere hot, so then I get hot. Yeah, it's like you're cold, <laughs> so your body's, like, let's think of somewhere warm. Yeah. That'd be funny. <laughs> so, I guess what is some of the advice if someone else, you know, were, like, thinking they're going to start a side hustle, like, they're right now – they're working full time. It's like on like the back burner. Like, what mm. would you say? Like, is your best advice for them? Hmm. I would definitely say um, if it's a product or even a service to like look at the market currently in like locally, um, mm. see if it's being done, see how it's being done. Um, if you know you're going to be branded instantly as like taking someone else's idea yep. or like recruiting someone else's customers and things like that because the local community in Newfoundland is really small um, and you don't want to really be stepping on anybody's toes and I mean while competition is good you don't want to cross the line um, 
And other than that, I would say definitely try to make a schedule, even though I still haven't done that successfully <laughs> myself. Um, and oh, there's like a million like Facebook groups for like local handmade stuff. Like yeah. join all of them. Like there's so yeah. much good information. Like um, <laughs> there's like marketing minds, new uh, marketing yeah. masterminds. Yeah, and then like the fem uh, the female entrepreneur wide Yeah, so like female entrepreneurs Get all of them on are Facebook. Here. Yeah, and like the it's like free advice that you wouldn't typically pay for and, and you can learn so much so quickly and it's I find those groups like so far they're not like huge yet so I don't know if it'll change as more people join but they're really like judgmental free like yeah. you can say whatever you want about your business or like how crappy your day is going and people like understand <laughs> so that's been great um, Newfoundland handmade and homemade yeah. Um, resources is another really good one. Um, there's also like Newfoundland, uh, Handmade, Homemade, Buy and Sell. So join all of those for sure. <laughs> Even just to like scope out like who's there. Maybe there's somebody who's your friend who you didn't know that had another side business and you can ask them in confidence like, you know, what their opinion is on it and stuff like that. So <laughs> also, um, I have to give a shout out to Lynn. Because <laughs> Lynn is like the know-all be-all for um, local. So if you have any questions and you're thinking about start starting any kind of saw gig in Newfoundland, like reach out to her. She has resources beyond resources. I, she must spend like her entire life <laughs> like researching stuff for people like she's helped me so much it's crazy and I guess like one of the things that I've seen that's really helped your business grow has been all the reviews mm -hmm. that you have on your page yeah. because I think that like you were talking about earlier with like professionalism mm -hmm. and like viewing you as a professional all of those reviews are like such a huge bonus yeah. to that yeah so uh, I guess what are the ways that you curate how many do you have now I think I'm close to 80 yeah that's a lot that's a lot yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I think it's I think like 79 80 ish yeah. Um, that was actually part of like bringing people over to my page as well. So when I went through my group, I literally went through, a, first of all, I keep a list of every single person who buys a window seat. Um, unless you're buying at a fair, I literally record your name and like all your details and I keep it forever. <laughs> So if anyone ever like wrote me, I can like kind of refer back to it. Yeah. But also when I was switching to the page, I went through my list of sales and literally messaged every single person I had sold a bed to up to that point and just said like, hey, I'm creating a new page. I really appreciate your support so far. If you want to continue supporting me, then, you know, please leave a review of your experience um, on, on my new Facebook page to help spread awareness. Um, another big thing is Facebook is like super focused on content. Yeah. So like engaging on those reviews is huge. So like responding to people about their experience, thanking them for their experience, asking them to share photos and like having an actual legitimate conversation with someone that you enjoy <laughs> on Facebook is huge because it gets it seen so yeah. much more. So I guess one other thing that we have just recently did, we've mm -hmm. added an insert to the the beds. Yes. So I have seen. I saw something similar um, at the CR salon. I guess like not similar at all, but it was a picture frame that had uh, like to follow them on social media, like at in their Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook. So we recently designed. Oh, look, she's still on the ball. She has it. <laughs> so we put that in. Oh, it's backwards. <laughs> oh, it's backwards down here. Sorry, you can't read it. But we it's put, all cool. <laughs> but we put that in the. Or I guess I. I just like helped her put that together. She put. She puts it in the window seats, and it asked uh, people to share their experience. So I think that that uh, will hopefully bring some more traffic to your Facebook page. My verbal diarrhea to Chelsea literally <laughs> created this. I like sh scream words at her and she, she creates no, graphics. I just <laughs> kept putting it together. Yeah. So um, like you said, engagement is really huge. But sometimes like what we'll see is if you, there's like a controversial post or like a negative mm -hmm. post, then that's going to get like a lot of engagement too. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the kind you want. And you and I like talk about this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we see a lot of is like this negative attitude on social media. Yeah. And it's like everybody has like... I guess more confidence to be negative yeah. behind a computer so yeah you, you get a lot more negative on <laughs> social media than you would in person um, it can be difficult at times I'm not gonna say it doesn't play on my mind because it certainly yeah. does um, but you have to like take a minute and think about how you're gonna respond before you react out of pure anger and yeah. like upset um, don't be emotional be professional um, you know, if it's not something you should be dealing with on social media, you know, don't. Like, yeah. go to another venue, write them personally, write, I don't know, maybe they work somewhere and you yeah. approach their, their boss or, you know, deal with it in a professional way. 
Um, not everything needs to be out there for the world to see. Um, if you feel like you want people to know that you address it, just say like, you know, I'm dressing this um, outside of my social media page. I just want to let my followers know. Yeah. Um, because so the other thing about good followers, which I've really support everybody's like <laughs> support and love, like it's been crazy, but they get heated too. <laughs> so your customers and like your clients or your followers, yeah. they're going to speak up for you really quickly. Um, and I try to like ask politely that they don't do that to, to an extent because yeah. I don't want negative energy on my page. Yeah. Like I want it to be like happy and positive <laughs> and full of furry friends and you know, lighthearted. <laughs> Full of furry friends. Yes, full of furry friends. <laughs> so um, with the seats that you're making, you actually like do donate to certain animal mm -hmm. rescues. So which ones are you donating to now? I actually have a post coming out soon about my update so okay. far of like how much we've uh, donated. Yeah. So, so far I've donated to um, feral felines, uh, which is mostly based out of Lethbridge. Mm -hmm. um, and they work with like the Claremont SPCA, but they do work all, like all across the province. They do uh, mostly TNR, which is trap neuter release, which is for feral yeah. cats. Um, they, I also have donated a window seat to Forget Me Not Animal Rescue, which is where one of my kitties came from. Um, also, Molly's Dream had a bed in their recent auction, and they're going to have another one as a fundraiser, as a, like a gift basket as yeah. well. Um, who else? Oh, Rhonda's Ranch, which is on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, she has literally a ranch of cats that she, um, she takes care of. Um, so I, I donated her as well to help with like spaying yeah. and neutering. Um, so how did yeah. you decide to make that decision that, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to, uh, you know, donate some of these profits that I'm making. Well, I've had three cats, Pico, who unfortunately yeah. recently passed, and then our current cats, Rock and Kukri. All three have been rescues. And I also volunteer and am like very involved with the rescue community locally. Mm -hmm. So I see the struggle and I see the need. And I was like, if I'm going to be, you know, promoting cat um, products and like, you know, the benefits of having the product for cats and like, you know, helping cats transition from an outdoor cat to an indoor cat, um, I wanted to be supporting the people who are also trying to find those cats permanent homes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of how it started. And I like I just couldn't not give back. <laughs> I donated my time for a long time. Now that I'm working, I don't have time yeah. to donate time. So I'm like, I want to give back somehow. So yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense. The proceeds definitely <laughs> helps. So towards the end of every show, we have a uh, the jar of awesome, which you guys know all about. So it is a set of questions. Some of them are submitted by you guys. Some of them are written out by me. So we're gonna let her draw. So we usually do three questions. We pick them out three. one. We pick them out one at a time. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm totally gonna be a weirdo. My favorite color is orange, so I'm only picking orange You're ones. You're only picking orange ones. Yeah. Okay. I thought your favorite color was teal. <laughs> it should be. You would think everything I brand <laughs> is teal and like coral. I do love teal, but orange. I have a special spot for orange. What is one new thing you've learned recently? Hmm. One new thing I re learned recently. Oh, um, I've been learning recently that just because you have a business doesn't mean that your personal opinions and views and um, emotions and um, values aren't going to affect your business. So I've been trying to like tiptoe that line by being like true and honest to myself and still being able to speak my own voice, but also not have it negatively impact uh, my business and my customers and my supporters. Mm -hmm. So keeping the two separate while also being um, open about who the face of the business is is yeah. definitely something I've been trying to learn lately, and I, I think I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. I know that's so funny. I actually had like headshots done a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's like me and like as like most of you know, anyone who watches the show, like we have like beer on like the pretty pretty regular. So when I got my headshot done a couple weeks ago, I had like a beer in my picture. So my mom was messaging me and she's like, oh, she's like, I thought that was such a beautiful and professional photo of you. Until I saw the beer. And she actually was like, <laughs> until I saw the beer. And I was like, well, I was like, you know, like that's like kind of like part of my show and like part of my brand. So mm -hmm. I guess like what you portray to the world, I guess, can like turn people onto your business or off. Turn from people me. off, yeah. Yep. So it's hard to... Like you said, you still want to be you. You don't want to like yep. have the public manipulate you into someone who you're not. Yep. But I think you have to just be okay with the fact that some people aren't going to like you and some yep. people are. I know. I was like having like a meeting with like a couple other girls from the Fempreneur group. And they were saying, they're like, 
um, there was someone I think I don't know if it was like a client or if it was like someone that was just meeting with him and uh, this like lady was because um, like if anyone who's like follows my Instagram knows I'm like a huge like reader I love reading mm-hmm. and like this year I read like the subtle art of not giving a fuck yeah and on fuck yourself so this like lady that was meeting with them was like oh, I like just can't believe that like you know all of these uh all of these books and stuff, like, they have swear words, swear words. so <laughs> openly. And meanwhile, like, these girls who I was meeting with, like, they're, like, they swear all the time. Yeah, like, they're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, oh. yeah exactly, <laughs> right? And they're like, they're like, oh, like, and it's just, like, this kind of, like, weird dynamic then yeah. because, like, you, like, that's just kind of, like, who you are as a person. So then, you know, you kind of, like, look at, like, who am I comfortable working with? Like, am I comfortable with, like, suppressing who I am? I mean, not that, like, everyone's, like, throwing F-bombs around all the time <laughs> or anything like that, but it's just, uh, I guess, like, Especially today, I think there's, like, a lot of younger entrepreneurs who are, like, mm-hmm. getting... I guess it's a weird dynamic. Because, like, if you look... Have you watched Mad Men? Mm, like, casually. I'm not, like, <laughs> devoted. Because so, like, I know people uh, are, just, are, like, very devoted to that that show. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. in, like, the 60s and stuff, like, on that show, like, they're always, like, going out for, like, drinks with clients. Yeah. And, like, drinking in the middle of the day in their office. Yeah. And, like... But then, like, I think that they like, kind of, like, got away from that. And mm-hmm. now, like, with the startup culture, like, offices have kegs and there's mm-hmm. parties and that yeah. kind of stuff. So I think it's just this weird dynamic now that we're seeing. Yeah, and it's a mix of, like, you know, the, the older generation with the newer ones coming yeah. in and the whole term millennials, you know, we're, yeah. we're to blame for everything. So, <laughs> um, you know, blame us for yeah. the titles being F-bombed. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so question number two. All right. Oh, I got, okay. I got two, so I'll okay, just keep this one. Okay, two orange ones. Yeah. This is really convenient. It is. I'll keep this one for next. Okay. What is the place, best place you have ever traveled? Oh, my God. This could be like an hour conversation. <laughs> um, so getting back to the whole volunteering my time yeah. and that aspect of my life, which is extremely important. I find if I'm not giving something without expecting in return, then my like whole mindset just gets yeah. out of whack. I just I need that um, mm-hmm. to ground me. Um, so I actually volunteered with Habitat for Humanity with the Newfoundland branch here a few years ago and I went to India okay. and helped build a house over there or helped uh, build yep. a few houses in, in different stages for um, families over there in Pondicherry and that was definitely the best place I've ever traveled for like a million reasons. I could, like, yeah, I could go on forever. <laughs> I won't, but I could. <laughs> it was just the experience as a whole, just realizing like how disconnected you are from that side mm-hmm. of the world and like the, what their living conditions are and having to like ration water for the day and things like that and squatty potties like that yeah it was like, i know I've, I've had that experience yeah it's like it's a lot but it was um it was definitely the best place i've ever traveled probably one of the, also the hardest places i've ever traveled one of our travel days was like endless i think it, i think it and, and it ended up being like 50 excess hours so oh my goodness yeah it was bad but <laughs> like the last well like last year when i went to thailand i was like what i specifically did is like i was like i'm gonna break this flight up so i like left here and i flew to san francisco and i spent a few days in san francisco Smart. and i was like okay like i'm over but so the whole point was like i'm gonna avoid my jet lag and mm-hmm. i'm gonna like go to san francisco so like do a half time yeah. zone and then like yeah. yeah so san francisco i think is like four and a half hours behind from here mm-hmm. um and then apparently when i like crossed the pacific mm-hmm. it made it worse because it like <laughs> It then goes, like, ahead in time. So yeah. then I was, like, more jet lag than, like, what I would have originally been. If you went, like, the Atlantic way? Like, no, or? it's just, like, well, I think just, like, the time difference. Because I, I, like, acclimated to being, like, four and a half hours. And mm-hmm. then I, like, went ahead, like, 21 or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was crazy. I had no idea what time it was or what day it was yeah. for, like, a good few days. Yeah, that happened to us, too. We, like, landed. And I was, like, I need to go to bed. But I think it's, like, two in the afternoon. But I need to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What I always find weird is, like, I've been to Europe a couple of times. And flying um so we live the last time i went or like last few times like leaving toronto at night time mm-hmm. like it was like i guess like not really night but it'll be like 6 p.m or mm-hmm. 7 p.m and it's still like really light out and you like land in london and it's light out still <laughs> and i'm like where is the night like you just get so thrown off yeah and like the time difference there like i don't even think it's that much i think they're like three and a half three, hours ahead four of hours. us yeah depending on where you are yeah, yeah but it was uh it was quite an experience i guess for me yeah. but i'm like a big silk i need to sleep so much I am too. I'm like a total grandma. Hence, hence the tea love. Yeah. I'm like literally like, oh, I need my cup of tea and get ready for bed. And like 8.30 on a Friday <laughs> night. Everybody's like, what are you doing? I don't respond because I'm asleep. <laughs> well, my dad called me um, the other, so he called me. He was like, 
I think it was like last Sunday, and he called at like 10.15. Um, our time, and I was asleep, and he called again at, like, 10.30 or something, and he texted, like, what's up? And I was, like, just dead to the world. I was, like, <laughs> so asleep. And finally, I texted him back the next morning, and I was, like, talking to him, and he's, like, I was just so worried. He's, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that was wrong. You're, like, nothing's wrong. He's, like, that, he's like, that bothered me. Like, I didn't know where you were and why you weren't answering me. And I was, like, I was asleep. Like, I'm literally asleep. Yeah. Everyone, like, most people, though, like, my, like, Nan, even, like, my Nan stays up later than me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like, that. that's me. Yeah. <laughs> so, we have one more question. What is your favorite social media channel and why? So, like, as in between, like, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of thing? Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, yeah. LinkedIn. Okay. I, don't um, know. I would say Facebook has to be only because I'm, like, social media inept. And <laughs> I'm not really familiar with the other ones yet. But yeah. I've been, like, my Facebook game has been, like, upped, like, crazy ever since yeah. actually doing social media coaching <laughs> with you. And, like learning with algorithms and like you know how to get things seen and yep. how to build your brand and all of that stuff um so i feel like i have a fairly good handle on yep. facebook now and i'm trying to like convince myself to do the same with instagram <laughs> and i'm like slowly getting into it but yep. um i would think yeah like facebook is definitely my favorite right yep. now and it's definitely where the bulk of my customers learn about me and yep. see me um but i i need to up my instagram yeah see i have like i don't want to say like the opposite experience but um, I run into people all the time, and they're like, know me from the inf- Instagram. Like from Instagram. Yeah. yeah, they're like, they're like, oh my god, I love like your Instagram so much, and blo-. and I like find it really bizarre because I'm like, oh, like, yeah. like when you put this stuff out into the world, like, yeah, you don't actually think of people seeing it. Yeah, until you meet them, and you're like, yeah. oh no, people are seeing. <laughs> I find that at, at like when I go to fairs, like people come up to me like, hey, Melaine, and I'm like, I don't think I know you, <laughs> and they're like, um, no, you don't, but I know you through social media, <laughs> and like I'm like, oh okay, I'm like so glad that people are that friendly right off the start. Yeah, right. And it's like you already have this; they already have this connection with yeah. you. And getting to meet them in person is just awesome. And then sometimes when they say their name, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like talking to you all the time, like commenting yeah. through posts or whatever. Um, and I've never actually met the person. So, yeah. I know, this happens to me too. I'm actually excited. Like, one of the girls, uh, she's a local business owner. Um, I'll tell you guys more about it later. But uh, I'm meeting with her next Friday. And uh, she's, or not, no, wait, no, it's like two weeks from now. Or I, I don't even she's know. She's watching this one. What? I'm, next I'm Friday? Really, <laughs> no, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like really tired right now. It's been a really long week. So I'm just like, my days are all mixed up. I no idea like what day it is what time it is like it's sometime in april <laughs> yeah sometime in april but she's uh, really awesome and like that's how we connected which is like through instagram yeah. so i'm excited to learn from her on i think that's just like a really great platform same as like facebook is for you mm-hmm. yeah for sure and i think like once i get more into the instagram it's going to be great as yeah. well because as i mentioned previously like most of my yeah. content is photos which is why Instagram yeah. is going to be so important uh-huh. for me. Um, I just have to like bite the bullet and like do the research <laughs> and do the work and get into it. But my one pet peeve is that you can't schedule posts. It's like, oh, they're, well, they're introducing it with like Hootsuite and stuff now. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm not it's like a post different. scheduler for Instagram because I'm always just like doing it as like as come it happens. Yeah, yeah. And things. that's what I kind of want my Instagram to be too. Like, yeah. more so like I'm literally doing this right now. Like, yeah. and more so than like, oh, I scheduled this three yeah. days ago. So I think like one of my favorite uh, Instagram tips, so it's not necessarily an Instagram tip, but um, <laughs> so I was having this conversation with my friend Anna uh, the other day and she was sitting across from me at the table and like everyone who knows me like just knows how much I love like Instagram and playing around on it. And I follow her and I was like, Anna, I need your phone for a minute. And she's like, like, what are you doing? I was like, I need your phone. And she's like, okay. So I like took it and I like took my like corner of my shirt and I like wiped off her phone cameras. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, your pictures are blurry on Instagram and I can tell that your phone camera is dirty. I'm like, you touched, I was like, I think you touched the camera with your finger. <laughs> and she's like dying laughing at me. And she like didn't take me seriously. She's like, okay. Like, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, whatever. You're a crazy person. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like that evening, she like went up to Signal Hill and she like took this beautiful photo of like the waves and it like was not blurry at all. And she's like, thanks, Chelsea, for like making this shot happen. And I was like, yeah. So like, you have to clean off your camera every now and again. Like, it's a big thing. Like, it like reduces the quality of your pictures mm-hmm. and you might not even necessarily think of it. Or, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But having good lighting is important too. Like, mid afternoon yeah. light is the best for sure. I know. And that's why. Like, I was, natural light. That's why I was just telling her, it's like, I usually film in like this other room, which is like a little bit more convenient because they're like, there's a whiteboard, it's easier for us to see what talking about but uh the lighting if you guys like follow my pictures i'm posting just is not as great as this one so i guess the background is a little more boring here just the plain whiteboard should have drawn like a cat or something on there i like suck at drawing though so (laughs) so anyway 
now I'm in this one, so I'm going to be in this one, I think, for the foreseeable future. But uh, that's all for today, and we will see you again next week with uh, Kayla Walters of St. John's Beer Tours. And we successfully finished we our successfully tea. We successfully finished our tea, and this is surprising. <laughs> Usually it's like ice cold by the time I'm finishing it. <laughs> so have a good weekend, everyone. Enjoy your Easter. Eat lots of fish and chips today. Yes. And we will see you next week. See ya.